to increase the share that manufacturing contributes to continental GDP are limited by a crippling lack of reliable and affordable electricity. This is especially ironic given the continent's untapped electricity potential. The, content, uh, the content has a nearly 500 gigawatts of generation potential in hydro, geothermal and wind power alone. By far the biggest, however, is solar power at 11 terawatts, most of which is completely untapped. However, as the president of the African Development Bank explained to CCTV's Raman Yang, expanding access to affordable, reliable electricity isn't just about manufacturing. Africa loses today 600,000 people every year. Half of those are women and half of those are children under the age of five that die just because their mothers are trying to cook a meal, you know, which is not acceptable. And so, but as I said to you, we are going to, as African Development Bank, help Africa to massively unlock all of its energy potential. Some of that is going to be from conventional energy sources, and a lot of it is going to be in unlocking this huge amount of renewable energy potential that we have. And we are doing that already so in Morocco, which the bank is also invested in the uh, Uzazate uh, project, which is the largest uh, concentrated uh, uh, power, uh, uh, solar plant uh, in the world, solar wind, you know, a solar farm in the world, which will provide about 500 megawatts of electricity. So the bank is investing already a lot in renewable energy. I want the bank to lead in terms of renewable energy, and I've also indicated that uh, the bank will also consider differential pricing of renewable energy. In other words, we'll lend at a lower interest rate so that we can you know, allow countries and private sector that wants to invest in renewable energy to be able to do so, because it's important for us to, to, to do that. Are we at a point where solar power can become more and more affordable? Because going back to the project you mentioned in Morocco, I remember the tariffs that were agreed for that was about 18 US cents per kilowatt hour, which is relatively high. Um, but our future projects, based on the projections we've seen, the studies, the technology that's coming through, is solar power going to become progressively cheaper? I think that is happening already. Uh, if you look in Kenya, uh, if you look in Zambia, if you look in even in, in Morocco, uh, you find that with technology, with innovations, um, it's becoming a lot easier, cheaper actually, and easier to have access to both the components, but also have access to them at a lower cost. No, I, I expect that um, solar, in particular the photovoltaic cells, uh, you know, individual power, uh, uh, um, micro part stations that you basically will have in your own home are going to become increasingly cheaper you know to, to to have in most parts of europe today the price of renewable energy has gone down significantly although a lot of that has been supported by subsidies but the point that i want to make is that you know look we've got all this sun anyway in africa we might as well just make great use of it some would argue um, in light of things like 3d printing the spread out of um, manufacturing in some cases because that's basically disrupting what we know traditionally as manufacturing some would perhaps argue that industrialization as we know it from china might not necessarily come through and export those jobs off to africa even if we may have the wage advantage but on a skills basis we still have a lot of work to do i really do believe that Africa is where that next frontier is. If you take a look at it in terms of what is being done today by China um, in Ethiopia, in terms of their leather industry, that it was non-existent. Look at it today. You know, Ethiopia is becoming a big player in the leather industry because of its investment in industrial sectors uh, to be able to tap into what China has to offer that. But you also see some of that already in Rwanda as well in terms of textile manufacturing. So I do believe that the, the wage rates are all in favor of Africa because if you take a look at the um, you know, skills wage rate today in maybe Ethiopia, as is the same for most parts of Africa, it's probably about 28 percent of what the skilled wage rates are in China. And the unskilled wage rates are about 18 percent of what they are in China. So we're fine in terms of wage rate, but we've just got to make sure that both in terms of the skills in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of solving the energy problem, 